OMP Hobby recently sent me their brand new 49 inch big horn. More about that though in the next video. To my surprise though, they also sent me their brand new M1 3D helicopter to play with. And it comes in three rather cool colour schemes. Now, some of you may remember from way back when that I did used to fly 3D helis for a while, picking up a lot of the tricks, but in the end I didn't really have time to keep everything going and decided to stick with what I was good at. I haven't flown a heli for years, so this video is going to be about figuring out just how this works, how easy it is to actually set up and get working, and then of course we'll see what, if any, heli reflexes I have left. Inside the box we had the fully assembled M1 helicopter, a 2S 300mAh LiPo, its special charging and balancing cable, a couple of tools and a very quick manual. Well, after going through the manual, I realised that it details how to alter the gyro gain and servo throws, but not much else. So after a while of surfing the net, I figured out all the bits that I wanted to know and the answers to the questions that I had. So to save you some time, here you go. There are two versions of the M1. This one comes with an integrated Futaba compatible receiver or the other version has an OMP own brand receiver. You can plug in external satellites for Spectrum or even for Taba S Bus receivers onto both versions. So I could connect a PowerBox receiver and set it to output S Bus, but I didn't particularly fancy trying to fit the receiver under the canopy. And then I decided just to use the integrated Futaba receiver instead. Next up, binding. Not mentioned anywhere in the manual, but in my case, it was actually nice and easy. Just press and hold down the bind button and the helicopter will figure everything out on its own. I would always recommend removing all of the blades before binding or performing any setup. After all, you don't want to press the wrong button or reverse the wrong channel and have this thing spool up, hit you or fly away. Using a Futaba radio, my channel order was standard, set up with an H1 style swash and no need to reverse the motor channel. We will set up our motor and pitch curves to our own liking as usual, and in my case a classic linear for basic hovering and then flat motor curves for both idles. Channel 6 controls the pitch, and channel 5 controls what they seem to call stability mode which you could also consider a kind of rescue mode. When deactivated, you have full control over the 3D heli. However, when activated, the helicopter won't allow you to go inverted or even past 45 degrees for that matter. And if you activate it when things start going wrong, say if you're inverted, it will actually flip you back upright. So I'll be keeping that particular switch very handy as I'm going to be very rusty at this. When the red LED is flashing, it's in rescue mode, and when it's a solid red, you're in full 3D mode. A fun trick that Heli Pro Kyle Dahl recommends for this size heli is also to make sure that the blades are at the right tension. If they're too tight, the blades will not self-center upon spool up and will cause vibration. And something similar happens if they're too loose as well. The sweet spot is apparently to have the blades stay in place when holding the heli sideways on, but free enough that they can drop just with a little bump. Anyway, that's all the basics sorted. Let's go and try this thing out. And where better to test and show off the new M1 helicopter than at a local helicopter event? Just remember, I haven't flown one of these things for two, three, four years. See how it goes.
Still got it. Or at least the OMP Hobby M1 has it. It's agile, it's precise, and it's very capable. If you want to just hover around the garden, you can definitely do that. Drop down the head speed, put it in stability mode if you want to, and it becomes pretty much uncrashable. But take off that stability mode, increase that head speed. I was running, as you saw, about 55 and 65% in idles, and that has more than enough power than anyone should need. It's very agile, can do all the tricks in the book, and on those rates, I was running about three minutes flight time, and then that was still giving me a 30% residue in the battery. So long life to the battery as well. All in all, a really fun helicopter. And oh yeah, if you're 3Ding it, you can still flip that rescue mode, and no matter what you're doing, it will flip you upright and give you a second to regain composure before either continuing or landing, whichever <laughs> is appropriate at the time. So definitely a fun little heli. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave us a like, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.